Hey everybody, Obsessive Prepper AZ. I'm doing dinner tonight and I figured I would uh, take you along and show you what I'm doing for chuck roast. Now I make chuck roast all the time and I always cook a lot of it because I love the fact that uh, after we've ate that dinner that night, I have roast beef for the next day for sandwiches and things. And uh, my son is coming over for dinner tonight so I figured I would give him a treat and uh, make him some uh, some dinner. So what I've got here is a uh, it's about almost a little shy of six and a half pounds of chuck roast. I don't buy the bone in. I only purchase the uh, the whole meat, no bone in. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding a good amount of pepper to my chuck roast. And uh, one of the ingredients that I use all the time that I love is uh, uh, Montreal steak seasoning. I use this stuff on everything. So if you don't know what Montreal is, that's it right there. It's made by McCormick's. And uh, like I said, I use it on everything. I love the blend of seasonings that's in it. Um, we're looking at, uh, oh, salt, pepper, red pepper, garlic, sunflower oil, um, just several different things. Paprika. Um, but like I said, I use it and uh, I, I love it. Um, so what I do is I just do a generous amount of it all over the place. I've got my cast iron frying pan and this is what I normally cook my uh, pot roast in, my chuck roast. I love my cast iron. I've got some sea salt here that I put on. Gen pretty much generous amount of it. I mean you've got a lot of meat here. And uh, when you're doing food preps, things like that, um, if somebody's just watching this video because of its uh, um, that my pot roast video, um, just to give you a heads up about me, I'm Obsessive Prepper AZ. Um, I do a lot of videos on food preparedness, um, food storage, um, things for long term um, for preppers. So uh, just for like an in-case uh, SHTF situation or something like that. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, anybody that's watching, you already know me. I'm doing this video just because I figured you could see what I'm doing for dinner tonight. Okay, so I've got a good amount of my seasonings on. And I've got my cast iron skillet here. And you can feel if you're ready um, up to temperature or not. And what I will do is I will cook this at at a, a high level because what you want to do is you want to sear the outside and the sides of your um, your chuck roast before you put it in the oven. Now I've got my oven in, um, set for 375 degrees. It'll take approximately an hour and a half, possibly two hours for it to cook um, completely in the oven. But when you, you know when you're done is when you stick your fork in it and you twist it, that meat will flake out. And it is awesome tasting. Um, it, it, it's perfect when it starts to flake and pulls apart like that. So I've got my meat. And what I'm doing here is just putting it inside my cast iron. And it'll all fit. And like I said, I'm going to cook it at high heat. I love using tin foil when I'm doing something like that because I just throw it away. Although I have to say, if anybody's paid attention, the cost of tin foil is going through the roof. Um, so I don't, I do not like use it as much as I once did. But I'll recycle it so somebody else will get to use it. Use it. Okay, so all I'm doing right now is I'm going to cook this on a high, high heat, and. Uh, It'll get to the point where I almost want it almost like a, a blackened look to it. And I won't, and then the next seasoning that I'll put on it, I love the Lowry's garlic salt. I know anybody that's watched the videos have seen, um, I use this quite a bit too, but I'm not going to add this on until after I'm doing, I'm done with the browning because you do not want the garlic to burn. So uh, that's just something that I, I don't like doing. Um, now, on my onions, there's no real um, guideline of how to cut an onion that I put in there for cooking. Now, what I'll do is I'll put a full onion in, sliced up, 
just to get the taste of the onion cooking inside the, uh, the meat mixture. And then what I'll do is I'll have another onion after it's cooked for, a, let's call it an hour, hour and a half. Then I'll take the onions, my carrots and my potatoes and I'll add that to my mixture once that's done. Um, so I've lost my other knife. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, bear with me. All right. So like I said, all I do is pretty much coarse chop my onion. No real design to it. Just enough so that it'll get in and mix around and get that good flavor to your pot roast when you're cooking it. Okay, let me look at my meat. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this or not. Yeah, you can. Okay, see how that's got that nice sear on the one side? So that's what you want. So I'll flip it over and we're gonna do the other side. Probably another, oh, I don't know. Probably, let's, I'm going to call it at least another five minutes searing like this. So what I will do now is I will just add all my onions. Well, I'm talking too fast. My garlic salt. And another generous amount of it because it just works in. It's like when you're doing a prime rib. You want to, uh, you know, get a good coat on it because it's the outside. It's not the inside. And so... Uh, just do a decent coat of all my seasonings again. And then what I'll do is I'll take my onions at that point and mix them in and around. On my other vegetables, my carrots and my potatoes and uh, my other onions, what I will do uh, before I put them in the pan here, I will take them, coat them with a little bit of olive oil and then I will um, season them with my a little bit of the Montreal steak seasoning, the garlic, salt, and pepper. And then when it's ready to uh, be done, then I will come back to you and uh, I will show you what it looks like at that point. I'm going to try to get this in a little bit closer, so bear with me here. All right, there you go. So when it gets to that point, I will bring you back and show you what it looks like before I add all the vegetables to it. So uh, I'll, all I will do at this point, yep, you can see I'm getting a real good brown sear on this, but I still probably want to go at least, I'm going to call it another three minutes, four minutes. So I'm not going to sit there and hold you up on this. You see the general idea. I've got the oil in the bottom of my pan. I've got my meat seasoned. I generally, generally try to get my meat um, close to room temperature. Um, season my meat, put my uh, burner on high, and then what I will do is sear both sides of your meat with your seasoning, except the garlic. And then uh, what I will do is I will put this lid on, which is an oven safe lid that I've got for my cast iron here. And uh, what I will do is throw this in my oven 375 and uh, for the first hour just by itself then what I'll come back to and that's when I'll come back to you with the vegetables and stuff and then I'll show you what I do with my vegetables so uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this this point up to this point and I'll get back to you in just a second well a second <laughs> if you want to call an hour a second so okay so I've got my pot roast out of the oven I wanted to show you it's been about an hour and 15 minutes like I've told you I'm gonna slide this away and then I'm gonna show you what I've got here so in this pan I've got carrots potatoes and onions and uh, what I do is I just do a little bit of olive oil and then I reseason my vegetables so like I said I love my uh, garlic salt Montreal steak seasoning not a ton of it, just enough. And then pepper. And uh, because I already added the uh, garlic salt, I'm not going to add more salt to it. And then also what I add is uh, some ground garlic that I get. I love ground garlic, so that's what I use. And then all I'm going to do is blend this 
and then I'm going to put it on top of my roast. And then what I'll do is cook it for another give or take hour. And so uh, try to fit it all on here. Uh, luckily my lid has an awesome uh, curve to it so I can get all this in there and not have an issue with it not fitting. And then what's nice is because the lid is metal, um, the potato pieces get like a brown to them so on top, like a crispy brown. Sometimes I'll have to push the lid, but it'll be fine. Okay, let me clean my hands real quick. So then all I do is take my lid, put it on top, and then, like I said, I end up having to smash my lid, but this lid works perfect for this uh, pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back into the oven for an hour. Or s it's, uh, yeah, for another hour. And then I'll come back with you and I'll show you by poking it, the fork into it and show you the texture that it needs to be. So I'll come back to you as soon as that's ready. Okay, so I've got my pot roast out. And uh, what I was telling you all is what you've got to do is how you know that your pot roast is done is when you stick your fork in and you can twist it and your meat comes out that's when you know that your pot roast is done because it, it w would not do this otherwise and this is when it's at that great point so uh, I'm going to try to get some of my potatoes and my carrots and stuff out of the way so I can pull one of my pieces of meat out of my pan I've got my whole family sitting here. I tell them to hush up, let me do this video, and they're all starving and waiting for me to uh, have dinner. Okay, so I've got some of my potatoes out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this one piece of meat out and I'll show you how great it slices. I mean, literally, it will fall apart. So you want it to sit for a few minutes That's the pot roast. And uh, like I said, I always make extra because you can see how it's just falling apart. But I always make extra so that we can make sandwiches from it. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you can see this. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's what we've got here. And so my family's waiting to uh, eat. So uh my daughter's filming me doing something over there. <laughs> so anyways, uh, try this. I think you'll enjoy it, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.